the recording on. Okay, Trevor, do you want to call this to order? I will call this meeting to order at 405. Nine, is that okay? 409. <laughs> uh, Julie, go ahead. Okay. Okay, so Jeff sent us as a group um, the purchasing policy, can you see, that they use for schools for us to talk about um, using something like this at the council. So I sent it to you guys and I added some markups to start, but if you had some um, comments to add of other changes or things, we could add those in. And then this, if we like it, we could vote to send forward to the executive committee for review and then we'll go to the full council. Um, so to start right away, everywhere it's a district, I put, you know, we changed to council since we're not a school district. We're the council. Um, where it says superintendent, I put exactly. director because the board de delegates overall purchasing authority to the director and serves as the council's chief procurement officer. That is um, what I do now. I do all the procuring, you know, when we put something out for request for proposal or something like that. Again, more language change where it says district, change it to the council. Um, and then I did put whoever your director is, is your is your chief procurement officer for the council. Um, here it says complete purchasing record system shall be maintained by the chief procurement officer. Um, I think that should be, we could say that and or designated state agency since they do all our fiscal work, I think it should be maintained by our designated state agency. Um, but what's your, do you guys want to just run through this line by line or give feedback as we go? What are your thoughts? I think that change with the designated state agency and also I want to see it up to a maximum of 10,000. Okay, I think we're going to get there. Um, and then this, um, we might want to strike procurement officer, officer, unless we want to change this. Um, right now, like I have a purchasing card to buy things um, with staff do not, but that doesn't mean staff can't. What are your guys' thoughts on um, like if we would get employees a purchasing card as well? I don't actually know the rules on that. I'd have to check with with our fiscal office, if it's just the director has one. Um, it's been fine so far with just me having the key card, but I, I just- I wanna have you have it. Okay. Because we don't know if those people will turn over since it's a temporary employee. Okay, yeah, it is a temp position, yeah. Um, Oh, I, that's where I was talking about. Yeah, I was only one right now with the P card. And then remove that then since we wouldn't approve other employees purchases. Um, and then keeping, you know, purchases conform with state laws. Um, we act in good faith to purchase at levels that is fair competition. We will document our purchases through a P card system, which we do now. We do have re receipts with that. And then we submit um, P cards monthly go to our designated state agency fiscal office. So I think we would change that language. I, I send in the P card purchases with receipts and a report every month, and that goes to fiscal, to our accountant and on up. Um, we check to make sure we have the supplies we might need. Um, and um, obtaining through, through existing cooperative purchasing agree agreements, that is like if the state, so uh, innovative office solutions has like our contracts, so we buy our supplies through them. Coal Papers has our paper contracts, so we buy paper through Coal Papers, so we do um, follow the rules with purchasing within state contracts already established. So I think that's good to keep that language there. I 
again, just changing to council. What do you guys think about purchases are made using restrictive funds? Purchases must conform to requirements associated with those funds. I mean, all of our funds are grant funds, so I think that's a different thing than something we would be dealing with. Yeah. Um, And then we don't we don't buy we don't do legal services or public improvement purchases or construction. No. Um, so we could delete that, I guess, or we could keep it. It says not applicable, but we don't. Yeah, we don't buy that don't kind of stuff. Um, we just need to conform the policy to our needs. Yeah, and this will go through, you know, more the whole council as well, but. So we'll we'll remove it and say we aren't going to issue cards to staff. Then, if you guys want that, yep. um, or building level administrators. So here it talks about purchases less than ten thousand dollars. So what threshold would we want to put to okay purchases? Up to ten thousand. So ten thousand. Should we say ten thousand or less? Because once yeah. it gets to ten thousand, that is a procurement level. So then we go through procurement. Up to ten. What are your guys' thoughts online, Crystal and Daryl? Can you hear me? Yes, now I can. Okay, yeah, I don't know. I was trying to say something earlier, but I didn't think it was working very well. Oh, I, no, I didn't hear you. Sorry. Okay, yeah, I think up to 10. I think that would work out. I do. I was trying to say something earlier with like up there when you were talking about like having staff be able to have purchasing power. I feel kind of like we might like we should have something in there along those lines anyways, just so that we're covered. So if you were to say, hey, so and so is out here. I want them to pick this up for me to bring here, just so at least it, you know, not necessarily that they might have a card, but just so that like if you needed to reimburse them or for picking something up from you, then you have that okay. authority to be able to allow them to verbally give them say yes, pick this up. We'll either reimburse you or, you know, whatever. Does that make sense? Sure. Yeah. Um, maybe through P this P cards here, we can do a statement of um, staff could pick up an item. How would we word that? Um, and they will get reimbursed. Yeah, staff is uh, permitted to, you know, purchase items at the director's, you know, authority. With, um, You cut out. Did you stop at after that? Oh shoot, I can't hear you. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes, sorry. Okay, yeah, no, just like staff is permitted to purchase items with director's authority with the understanding um, that reimbursement is permissible, you know, something along those lines. Yeah, for allowable costs or something. Yep. Okay. Just, yep. So that you can that if you know somebody else needs to pick something up for you. That's right. Yep. Okay. So the ten thousand or less purchases. Um, I think we should we get rid of purchaser shall obtain at least one fair and reasonable quote. I guess that's that's fine. If you're purchasing something, you have we always have a quote or a receipt. So we always do have that. Does that seem fine? And then um, okay. straight through we've developed criteria. Um, if multiple or informal bids is necessary, because what we would do is follow the 10,000 up thresholds, we'll do follow um, straight state procurement rules. I think we could put that there. Um, I put the council will follow state procurement guidelines when multiple informal bids or proposals are necessary. And then we will follow guidelines, these purchases 10,000 and up will follow procurement guidelines. So we're making sure we're doing three informal bids or we're going out to RFP, whatever we do. Yep. 
So what do you think about this part? Delegation of purchasing authority when a conflict of interest is declared. In the event an individual with purchasing authority has a conflict of interest under the law, they shall contact the chief procurement officer who shall appoint another employee to oversee the procurement process. I don't really know if we would have that occur. No, no I don't. Okay. And then um, here too, um, purchases requiring contracts. So instead of going to the district's legal counsel, we would um, go to state procurement officers before adoption. Um, and then um, I think we should probably put in there too before adoption and then review by executive committee and or council for vote board vote. Cause you know, we, we vote as a board on those big things. Executive committee and or full council for a vote. Does that sound okay to say that we are gonna the ten thousand or more contracts they're gonna come to executive committee and or council for a vote? So that's not, I'm not going to decide that alone. That's you guys, you score those projects, you vote on them, they go forward to full council. Yep. Okay. Um, and then this says contracts shall be no longer than one year in term. Um, what do you guys want to do with that? I mean, I, I recommend we say we can follow state procurement guidelines for renewals and extensions with the board vote. Sometimes we grant things two years off the bat and it just kind of depends. So what kind of wording would you like to see there? Um, should it be the term of contracts will be by council vote and procurement guidelines, something like that? Can you give another example of like something that you might purchase that may have a time frame allotted to it? Um, okay, say that one more time. Like, can you give an example of something? If you said sometimes like you do a contract for two years at a time, like what is an example of one? Um, we did like a, a van contract with Schumacher Transportation for a couple of years for van rides. Have you had ones that are longer than two years? Um, we have done, you know, for our big RFPs, like our law enforcement grant, we when we changed that and added extensions or they grew the project, we did do it more than one year. Um, but I don't I don't know if that really fits here because, you know, I'm not going to buy a supply for a two year contract or something, but I guess maybe my copier lease that's for multiple years to lease my copier. Maybe um, contracts and leases will be voted on by board vote or something for terms. I don't know. I think I think you should put some contract length shall be you know, up to the discretion of the director unless, you know, ones are required for three years or more, then it can be brought to the exec committee or, you know, something along those lines, because that gives you some freedom to be able to choose. Because if it's going to be a copy machine thing, I'm not sure that we necessarily need to say, yep, you're going to have this, uh, this agreement for your copy yeah. machine for five years, because a lot of times with copy machines, those leases are five, six years. You should be able to have the discussion. Yeah, right. to that. You know, whereas when it comes to bigger things with grants, you're going to bring it up to whatever, you know, board anyway. But if it's something smaller that, you know, we don't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, maybe we should stipulate as contract length for administrative purchases because any 
other grant we do is not an admin purchase, you know, that's yep. just for those administrative things. Yep. So then you could say contract for administrative purchases. You know, well, the discretion for the contract length for administrative purchases will be up to the director. Contracts for grant related funding that are longer than two years, you know, if it's some, because most of the time we're going to be voting on that anyways, but if we'd already kind of talked about it. Right. Yeah, contracts for program would be reviewed and voted on by the executive committee and or board. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, and then there's probably unauthorized purchases, I'm sure, in a state policy, so we could reference it there, like, you know, you can't, like, go to the bar with your P-card or whatever, you know what I mean? So we could just reference the policy at the state level there of what, what's an unauthorized purchase. And then the rest I just crossed off because that's their other things there, but we could start with this if that works for you guys. We're not going to know if something else needs to be added or changed until something else comes up. It's general enough to be able to give us what we need and uh, and some, you know, descriptive enough in the areas, just like, you know, when we say admin contract versus program contract, you know, more personalized mm -hmm. to the okay. that way. Yep. Okay. Um, any other comments, Daryl, Trevor? No. No. Daryl? Daryl, do you have any more comments? He had to roll away a minute. He got a phone call. Okay. He's back now. Well, I can add in this. Okay. Daryl, any other comments? I don't think so. Okay. I could clean this up and add in your edits, and then um, we can send it. Uh, we'll make sure it's reflected correctly and then send it forward to exec. But is there a, um, a motion and a vote on accepting this document with edits? I'll make a motion. Okay. <laughs> okay. Accept the. Daryl, you made a motion. Is there a second? Did Daryl make a motion? Yes, I did. Oh, okay. okay. Then I'll take a second. Oh, didn't you hear me? And Crystal <laughs> seconded. I suppose that means it passes then. Trevor. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Thank you. Okay, one last thing. I sent out the match document Megan and I were working on with different years. Did you like how that looks? Something like that that we can just share? Uh, yes. Yeah, I thought that was easier to see or read. Okay. Okay, I think that's all I have for today. Unless you have anything else. You wanna um, call it? Adjourn it? Adjourn. <laughs> See y'all later. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thanks everybody. Yep. Thank you. See ya. Have a great day.